the last few pages features some artists' uh, use of tools and material. So if you are trying to learn about sketching and drawing and what to buy, what to get for drawing, sketching, the, the few pages uh, gave you a lot of information on what to do, including painting and uh, drawing, right? So, awesome. Hi. So today's, today's workshop is, is about drawing expressive human figures. Uh, my name is Don. Uh, James is uh, downstairs helping with the reception. And if he's free, he will come up and he will probably help me with it, but it's okay. Um, this, this is going to be a one and a half hour uh, sharing, a very casual sharing. And then followed up by uh, a hands on. So the hands on is I'm giving you guys some time to draw so I have brought some materials and tools brushes so that you guys can come up uh, it's not free for you to take home but uh, <coughs> some brushes that later you can use to, to draw a sketch and I'm going to do uh, some a little bit of demonstration on how I approach uh, this method right okay This slide is a little bit technical, right? Um, we are going to do expressive human behavior. But I would like to point out from this slide some key landmarks or key areas that you, uh, as an artist, will look out for when we draw human behavior, right? So, <coughs> It's not so difficult, but let me point out to you uh, bit by bit, okay? So if you, see, if you see a standing figure like this, what do you look out for, right? Most of you look at the face, pretty, and then you start to draw, right? But as an artist, we, we look out for certain areas that tell us about the pose because we are more interested in telling the pose, not drawing the pose, and the pose actually tells us, uh, tells a story of what the person is doing. And the first thing we, we look out for would be the shoulders, okay? Not the face, right? The shoulders. So the shoulders is actually from, you can actually see the collarbone here, right? This is the tip of the neck where the muscles come in from, the, from behind the beard. I'm not going to use any kind of so. <laughs> two muscles, two muscles that hold the, the head connect to the head of the neck and then where, where the collarbone is so the collarbone actually forms a V-shape like this down to the sternum and it ends at the acromion process or the shoulder part where it joins to, to the arm so this is actually a two point that we look out for and of, of course, what do we look out for? besides that, we see the relative position of, the, of both sides of the shoulder, right? And, and, it, and in the standing pose, the shoulder, if the, if the person is resting, her weight, piece of her weight, on one leg, usually we stand with, we stand with the, we don't stand straight all the time, right? We kind of slouch a bit, shake our hip to one side, and then resting, a, resting our, our weight on one leg. So in that position, usually, one part of the shoulder is much higher than the other. So immediately you register, register in your head which is the higher portion of the shoulder. Right? So that's the first thing that we look out for. And then <coughs> we look at the hip. Okay? The hip. There are two portions that join to the, to the bone, the thigh bone here. So the hip rests in this position. And we call this actually the where the crotch is. And right above is our is our pelvis, and this is where the hip joint uh, is. And if you look at this picture, which is much clearer, right, the hip is actually rotated on one side to uh, rotate the 
certain angle. Okay? One of the hip joints is much lower than the other. Okay? So that is also another thing that we look out for. And if we draw lines to connect the shoulders, the shoulder joint, and also draw lines to connect the, uh, the hip joint, you, what do you see? Do you see that both are pointing at different direction, right? So look when you draw a standing pose. Quickly look at the orientation of the the two main main landmark. Alright? And we call this it both of both of them should always point to a different direction. And we call this contra contrapostal position, right? And then when you join the, join the shoulder joints and the hip joint, we call it the shoulder line and the hip line. Okay. So the next thing we also look out for if the person is standing straight on facing you is the, the contour that marks out the, the back of the body, especially the torso. So you can, if you draw a central axis down from the hip to the neck, to the sternum, down to the navel, right? You will get a very a, a, a subtle curve, curve. It's not a straight line. Okay? So now you have it. You have shoulder line and, sh and shoulder line and hip line pointing in a different direction, and then the body is actually a curve. So if your drawing doesn't reflect this, your if your drawing your drawing must look very, very static. And then there's no motion. In, there's no motion to, to suggest the pose, and then the story doesn't continue. Doesn't, the story stops there, right? Okay. So the fourth thing, right? The fourth thing, which is very important, is if you if you if you um, if you put a plumb line. A plumb line that means it's actually uh, like a string with a weight attached at the end, and then you and then you let it hang. Right, you will always be perpendicular to the floor, right? So this is a plumb line that you put, that you draw a perpendicular line to the ground. You draw a straight line down, right? This the line we call it the balance, the balance line. Okay, the balance line suggests where the weight of the person is. Okay, and if the person is uh, is balanced, it's not falling down. The plumb line usually will coincide between the legs, right? So if a person is in motion, you should need the plumb line is outside the two, the two legs. Okay, so three very important uh, axes, right? I call it the axis that you watch out for, okay? Um, so far, do you, uh, no question, very clear, right? Always look out for this, the three, uh, three line, okay? So, I, I drew something like this here, okay? Um, a common mistake for a lot of us to draw a human uh, head connecting to the neck and to the upper torso is to have the neck straight down, which is okay in front of you. But the neck connects to the shoulder like this. Alright, so this is not so right, okay? For the right anatomy, the neck is always in front of the shoulder. Got it? So I did a more accurate drawing like this. This is actually the cylindrical form of the neck. Right? It's actually resting on a diamond shape. Okay? A diamond shape like this. Is my voice on and off like can you hear me? Good. Okay, right. Let me know if you can't hear me. Right, so common mistake is we, we draw the neck and we stop and we go down to the shoulder. But in fact, if we draw the line straight down like this, okay, the neck overlaps the shoulder like this. Okay. So the shoulder, the structure of the shoulder is it reaches to the back, joins to the the seventh vertebral column, right? Right behind here, okay, and goes down to the to the both sides of the shoulder. But it, it forms a kind of V-shape in the collarbone. So the correct structure of the shoulder is actually the diamond shape. And then the neck is resting right in, in, 
to you. Got it? So that's something that we, we always uh, uh, forget. Okay? And importantly, when, when, the, when the person is facing away like this, okay, facing away and bending down, the shoulder, usually in perspective, the shoulder disappears. Right? It doesn't show more on this side. Okay, so always take note. This is what we are, we are always interested to in draw what we see and not what we perceive. And our perception is always thinking that, oh, no, the shoulder is missing. I had the shoulder. So it becomes, the your drawing becomes uh, the Egyptian hieroglyphic figure when, when the head is facing one direction while the body is facing the front. So that creates a distortion. And then your, and then your drawing becomes less expressive and less convincing, right? Okay, um, right at the top, this projector is a bit too high. Right at the top, there are, I did, I drew uh, some more axis that I want you guys to kind of remember, especially when you draw figures at the side view. So most of the time, you don't draw figures facing right at, in front of you, right? Usually you got a standing side or standing on three quarter view. So this is something that I want you to watch out. Let me go to the... Okay, so when a person is standing side view like this, okay, our common mistake is to draw the neck straight down. But notice that the neck is actually bent, no matter what. If the person is relaxed, even looking straight, the neck is always at a, at a, is a, orientated at, a, at an angle. So, and then the neck is continue from here, right? And below the chin, or in midpoint of the jaw. And it's uh, slanted. So this neck is right behind the head, not in front. Okay? Later I'll show you what we usually draw. Uh, how we have to draw the, the person inside with the negative demonstration later. This is one thing you want to watch out for the neck. And then for anyone, if you can actually see the back, usually we are cool. Uh, our shirt, our, our shirt, our t-shirt will, will block our back. But if you have a person wearing tank top like this, then essentially the small the back, the vertebral column bends like an S shape down to the pelvis. This is actually the tailbone, right? And we always see that on the, the pitch right above our buttocks, right? And then on the opposite side, the front of the body, okay, it stretches, right? It stretches from the pit of the neck, at the base of the neck, all the way down to the, the base of the pelvis. Alright, so on the side view, we always see this. So immediately when you look at a person, you will know, you tell yourself, you ask yourself, what is the first point? What is the, the thing that is the first point on the, on the, on the human figure? The abdomen, right? The abdomen. And the, therefore, the first point within the body itself is actually the navel, not anywhere else. Right, so that is actually the curve, right? The curve that you see. Okay. So the, the one I said here in the label is actually the first point. Right. So these are the, these are a few things that we, I always look, look out for before I draw. Right. Um, the the landmarks, which is shoulder line, hip line. When I look at the person, I start to measure. I start to see the relative position of the shoulder. Right. If the person is standing at a quarter view. I will see where the shoulder, where the other shoulder is in relation to the other one and where it hits, whether the, the shoulder is hidden or which shoulder is higher than this, you see, it's actually uh, always uh, like an angle, alright? And then, if you are drawing the side view, I see the axis, which is the front and then also the back. And then, especially to make your figure more convincing, uh, your neck should be at an angle, okay? Something that you do not really take notice of. But as you draw, you realize that if you, if you draw it wrongly, people will feel that, hey, your drawing is a little funny, but I can't tell. 
what's wrong with it. So this is actually all the mistakes that we usually need to commit. Right, cool. Uh, do you have any question for me? Uh, am I going too fast? No. Awesome. Okay. Um, okay. But we are more interested in drawing expressive videos, then we are not trying to pop down on all these different things. Okay? So a lot of people ask, how do I how do how do I draw a figure so fast? Alright? I use, I simplify everything in shapes. Okay? So a single figure, a clear example here, a single figure, all two single figure and one squatted figure. Okay? You can actually see by the way, I took this picture out from the internet, so there's a lot of things that you can actually find on the internet. I was, I was a little bit too lazy to draw, so I got this very good example. So, before you start drawing, right, in your mind, you already get the band, the pouch, right, the band at the angle of the neck, the relative position of the shoulder, uh, when the kid is, and as well as simplifying everything that you see into simple uh, geometrical uh, shapes. All right, you flatten out everything. So the best way to do for me, I, I used to squint my eyes, my eyes, and I look squint. I blocked out all the details in front of me, and I just see a silhouette. And within my mind, within my mind, I would kind of like, oh, this this guy looks like a, a barrel. So you talk to yourself. You know, this guy looks like a, a triangle. And the way to simplify is to look at the furthest point of the entire form. Right? The furthest point here, the furthest point, the furthest point at the knee, you join them up, you get the simple shapes. So once you once you get a very big broad shapes, you can start to break it up into smaller ones. Right? So that takes a lot. That takes a lot of uh, practice in terms of observation, also observing the people around you. All right. So even for a squat figure, it looks like a bullet. So you tell yourself, hey, there's a bullet, and then something stick out, which is the hand. All right. And once you get get a big broad shape here, you can start to uh, draw in the detail. So all the detail. A common mistake that you do always is you start off with a lot of details of the head, and then if the person move away. Then you say, ah, I've got no more time to draw, how come you go so fast? But it's not, you do not blame the person. Because you are not planning to post on your right? So, by seeing the shapes, you nail down, as you draw, you nail down the big broad shapes. And if this guy goes away, you fill up the detail. Right? Uh, as, you, as you look, uh, the trick is actually to try to remember as much as possible what you see. And not referring to it all the time. So, uh, the common way to draw is actually you pop your head like this, right? 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 But, I would recommend you look one time and then draw the rest. <laughs> that should be the trick, right? Okay. Huh? I always do this. <laughs> okay. But it takes a lot of practice, I mean, it's not so uh, straightforward as you see. So, at this moment, I would like to take some time to do some demo. And uh, I'm going to show you a thing that I use uh, to, to draw very quickly and then later to practice. Right? So, I'm going, to, I'm going to sit at this chair to, to do the demonstration. Okay, I, I didn't expect so many people to. So turn up. Uh, I have three figures here, right? So we can actually break it up to three groups. This group say finish, then you all go back, and next to come, then okay? So you all organize, organize it among yourself. And if you want to see all three, you can just like, <laughs> right? Okay. Okay.
Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll deal down here. And then, and then I'll do this. Okay, I'll new inside. <laughs> okay, what I have here is a brush. And this is a brush pen, you can get it from a lot of art shops. I have already ink and watercolor inside. And I have a, I'm going to use a pencil to, to draw. Okay. Because I didn't expect such a big turnout, so I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> so I, 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 might, I might fail in the first few attempts. <laughs> So, so later I'll be providing you guys with brushes and some ink, ink, right? Later you will dip your brush in. I have a few containers as well, so you can spit among yourself. Um, this is what I do. This is what you can do later. Right? So you see, I'm going to draw the first person. Um, so I'm going to look at okay, access. I'll just. So that's it. So you nail down the relative position like this, all right? And then you leave it to dry. Okay. Simple, right? So, <laughs> so the big broad shape is actually the tip of the head and the bulge of the the front, the torso. And then of course that's actually the in fact the the bend of the back is here, alright? But with this broad stroke you already nail down the shape. Okay, so while waiting for it to dry, I'll, be, I'll move on to the next, next figure. So same thing here, the neck, right? The band on the bottom of the back. Okay. Right, so that's it. Okay. So rest in top, maybe you don't have I actually, I actually noticed the orientation of the, the shoulder purposefully. I kind of like allow one shoulder to be much higher. So it's actually good to exaggerate your drawing a bit. Um, it, it, it makes your uh, image or your drawing a, little, a, a bit more readable. Okay, the, the key thing is actually to tell the story through your image. Uh, no one is going to take your drawing, find the person and say, hey, this is not accurate at all, right? So the key thing is, you have to be clear in terms of telling the story. Okay. Okay, and then the, this. Okay, and then the hand is here. Alright. So that's the main main construction. Alright. So When the watercolor is about to dry or semi-dry, you can use a pencil, a color pencil or a brush pen to go ahead and, and do in the, the basic detail. So we don't matter with the shape, but we can go ahead and do the face, right? The face like this, maybe the ear. And then the, the nose like this, and then the chin. Okay, and that's it. And then Find the, the back of the head, and then we move on to there's a white collar here, and then you can kind of like uh, draw the hand inside here, redefine the clothes like this, okay, and then maybe this is not shape is not not so good, so I go in and draw this, and then I pull down the legs, okay, that's it. So if we have more time, we can go in and kind of like put in some folds. Okay. So that completes the, uh, the main drawing. Okay. So later you're not going to, you guys are not going to do so big. It's, uh, I pro I'm providing you thin strips of paper so that you can play around the shapes. And you have to find your own, uh, the shorthand and the language and get used to, to it. 
right? I practice a lot. Okay? So here, the head. Okay. So even if you're not sure how to do the face, you just need to kind of like uh, the block it. And make sure you get the neck to bend, right? Bend. And then the, the hand. Look at the look at the relative position of the shoulder. This is right where the chin is. So you know the chin is here. So you must you, you be careful not to right? Not to exit your shoulder away from the chin. Okay, that will kind of distort a lot more. And then as you draw, make sure you sim also simplify the different portion of the You have no time. All you need to need to do is because you have the line roughly shows the the gesture of the the leg. Use the pencil later to fill up the, the rest of the flesh. Here is also the same thing. So do not draw eyes or the feature of the face is thin. Just leave it to dots. Okay? And the hand and the shoulder actually pull up here. And then the, the finger, kind of look at the shadow of the finger to draw. Alright, don't draw, don't draw complete finger like this. You know? It takes a long time. So what we look out for is actually the, the shadow of the knuckle. Right? Shadow of the knuckle. And then the shadow of the individual uh, digits. Okay. And look at the hair as a shape and not individual strength. Okay, simplify. So we are more interested in getting becoming more expressive. Okay. Quickly. So now I'm going to move on. This guy is going to shoot shoot me already, so if I don't finish. Right. So orientation of the hip, very important. All right. The the front axis suggests a little bit. Okay, suggests a little bit on the, the axis of the body, and then the top of the, the legs. Okay, the, where the knee is, relative position. All the key, all the key uh, landmarks where they are. One one knee is much higher, or the same position. So you got to the, the band has to be there. We are not doing accurate drawing, but we are kind of like keep going, keep going at the key landmarks and then keep comparing even the elbow is actually at the waist right if you, if you pull your elbow too long the drawing becomes a little bit lopsided okay so the knee and then a little bit of muscle here right and then the okay so you need to know where the the feet the foot is right, and then just kind of like drawing that wedge like this. And that's it. So, but very fancy drawing, but very quick, very bold. Um, the story is, is there, right? And we are not interested in in getting too much details in into the drawing. So later when we practice, we are going to practice very small drawing. So small little drawing, we can't put in a lot of details. So it forces you to. To just look at the, uh, the key shapes, the key movement of the, the figure, and then you just need to kind of adjust uh, all the key landmarks. All right. So any any questions so far? No. <laughs> this is a very normal pencil. It's eight B. It's eight B. Uh, the blue stapler. Right. You can get it from any uh, stationery. Okay. So you could use anything you could, to draw a line. You can use anything. You can even use a charcoal to, to draw. Okay. So uh, you can even, without even using a brush, you can also block it with a piece of broad charcoal. Okay. Let's say for example, I want to draw. Figure like this, right? So the band of the front also, 
the pinch of the back, and then the the, the glute muscle, and you can just kind of pain, especially the, the neck like this, where the the joint, or the buttock this, okay, and then the hip, the hip, right? It's actually kind of like a one side is. You no, know, this is actually quite balanced because the legs are all. Uh, but I think this this side is higher. Really. So next thing is to 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 see the relationship from the torso down to the to the the standing leg where you measure the where you have the the weight resting. Okay. So the, the other leg, you see the gestural line that like going up. This is actually making is made up of um, the S shape like this, right? And the back is kind of like. So this is a shape that I see. Okay. So just now I forgot to mention that what this one this one thing that uh, we tend to make a mistake. What 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 is it? I can't remember. I need to do a dem negative demonstration on. Huh? Ah yes, the shoulder. So common mistake is we draw the head. Okay, sweet, very sweet, right? The head, and then after that we draw the neck like this, and then we draw the body like this. All right. So the hand is here. Okay, so what's wrong, right? It looks weird. Do you, do you, do you, do you feel it's weird? That's because our neck is not in the straight, right? Our standing position, the neck cradles the, the skull like this, and then just put the neck here, okay? The spinal cord goes down and bend and stops at the uh, tailbone, and then you get your hip area. So the, the rib cage comes over here like this, and then it joins the abdomen muscle. So the furthest point of a standing figure or on the, on the side is always the navel. Okay. Right, but especially so if you have pop belly. Right. right? The navel is always the point. Even if the, you're drawing a female figure, the breast is just here. It's not, right? It's not usually at the, the furthest point. Okay, cool. Do you find this useful? Okay. So fine. Is it standing upright? Upright, I said. Um, no. This lady is actually leaning forward. Yes, if you look at this, this man here, right? You see he's standing upright. But look at the neck. The neck is actually hidden within the shirt. But if the, you draw the person, the neck is the head is here. Okay, the neck is a little bit short, like this. It's, it is still angled. Yes, very angled. And then it joins to the the shoulder because the shirt is blocking it. But you can see the bend of the back behind, and then the buttocks, right? But the, but the shirt goes out and covers everything. But of course, of course, when we draw a clothes figure, we are more interested in, in the outer contour and the shape, right? The shape, a simplified into like a bullet, and then, it, and then down to the legs, the bend of the leg. So it actually go an S curve like this, right? So, but even though, even when we are drawing a close figure, in our mind we are running through all the landmarks. The, the bulge of the, 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 the front torso, and then also the pinch at the, at the back of the neck, uh, back of the back, right? Okay, so, watch your watch neck. So, if we draw the, the man with a head like this, then we do not know how to continue because the relationship is already distorted. Any questions? Any other questions? Okay. Cool. <laughs>